One amazing morning to everyone. Are you all glad to be here? And uh, I don't know about you, but I'm glad to worship God. And together with everyone here, it is so nice just to give God all the glory and praise because He deserves it. So thank you so much for uh, our music team who uh, led us into a powerful praise and worship. Can we just give the Lord our God all the praise and all the clap of praise that He deserves? Welcome, everyone, even those who are here online. Welcome. This is Victory Quezon Avenue. We hope that one day we will see you here on site. We are located um, in the corner of Commerce and Elements Road, Eton Centuries Cluster 3, um, Edsa Corner, Quezon Avenue, Barangay Pinyahan, Quezon City. So invite your family and your friends because we want to see them face to face and be encouraged by the Word of God. You know, by the way, we just want to uh, inform our Victory Group leaders, next Sunday, we will be having our um, leaders huddle, and it will be right after our 9 a.m. worship service. So, Victory Group leaders, mark your calendars next Sunday po. We will be meeting up with you as soon as the service has ended, so come and join us. I'd like for everyone to please stand up on their feet right now in reverence to the Word of God as we begin to read from Scripture, Psalm 119, verse 153 to 160. Let me just read it to everyone. Look on my affliction and deliver me, for I do not forget your law. Plead my cause and redeem me. Give me life according to your promise. Salvation is far from the wicked, for they do not seek your statutes. Great is your mercy, O Lord. Give me life according to your rules. Many are my persecutors and my adversaries, but I do not swerve from your testimonies. I look at the faithless with disgust because they do not keep your commands. Consider how I love your precepts. Give me life according to your steadfast love. The sum of your word is truth, and every one of your righteous law rules endures forever. This is the word of God for all of us today. May the Lord our God anoint the preaching of His word. We are asking that the Holy Spirit will enlighten this word for all of us. As we look to Scripture, Lord, we will understand how we will best live our lives for your glory and honor. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you will speak through me as I proclaim your word and that we may be able to apply it in our lives, Lord. This we ask in Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. You may not take your seats. Medyo na iyak pa rin po ako sa time of worship natin. So, uh, ma may konting uh, sipon lang po ng konti ang inyo pong chewing pastor. But uh, I realize that it's an awesome moment for us as a congregation to really give God all the worship that He deserves. And thank you all for joining us in the time of worship. Today we are looking at a spiritual discipline we call as reading the Bible and how that reading the Bible would really uh, bring that, the transformation in our own lives. We all know the transformation began when the Lord Jesus Christ was received by a person and that every single one will have an opportunity to be forgiven for all their sins when they made that commitment to make Jesus Christ their Savior and their Lord. Today we are going to look at remembering the Word of God because there is a great tendency that in the midst of whatever is happening in the social media, whatever is happening in your life today, whatever is happening in your family, you might have a tendency to forget how great and faithful our God is. And because we are looking at how we will uphold Scripture, do you know that more than 500 years ago, exactly 505 years ago, there's actually a man who really upheld the Scripture and made it um, available for every single one of the believers. We all know that this man is uh, Martin Luther, and he's actually someone who made sure that every single normal people like us will be able to read the Bible. This is a picture of how Martin Luther, and uh, when he was appearing before this council, they wanted him to recant okay, what he has written. 
What he has actually written is about upholding the Word of God, and he wanted everyone to really have a chance to read God's Word. By the way, for the attribution, we just want to say thank you. We got this picture and this, um, this information also from nationalgeographic.com. Martin Luther, at the time then, he was being questioned and he was being said, you have to recant whatever you've written. Martin Luther said, my conscience is captive to the Word of God. I cannot and will not recant anything for to go against conscience is neither right nor safe. Here I stand. I believe that this is a, uh, a foundational history in our lives when someone named Martin Luther, who was a monk back then, and when he read the, powerful, the power of the Scripture, he wanted everyone to be transformed likewise according to the Word of God. That is why he mentioned in one of his writings, Sola Scriptura. Sola Scriptura means Scripture alone, which is the authoritative basis for the faith and practice of the Christian believer. The very reason why we wanted to proclaim the Word of God for all of us is so, so that we will have a guideline, you know, guidelines for us to follow. Because when we became born again, salvation is free. But living our lives for the glory and honor of God, we need to have a manual. We need to have a guideline in order for us to continue living our lives for His glory and honor. That is why he said that it is up to all of us to ensure that the Scripture is being number one in our lives. Sola Scriptura. It is also indicative that the Bible is God-breathed, it is complete, it is authoritative, and it is true. How many of you believe that the Bible is complete, authoritative, God-breathed, and it is true? Come on, let me see your hands. How many of you believe that whenever we are facing some tough challenge in our lives, the Bible has a lot of great things for all of us to be encouraged with? Just like Martin Luther, I pray that we will also look at Scripture to be the basis of how we will live our lives for the glory and honor of God. Why do I have to say this? Because remembering matters. When we look at Scripture, we, we look at how we're going to live our lives with the power of biblical theology. And then we also look at Christian history. What was happening then has actually propelled us where we are right now as Christians. I'm so thankful that men like him, men like Martin Luther, gave the Bible and make it be um, translated to common people like us. Ngayon po yung Biblia, ang dami na pong version yan. And I'm thankful na meron na pong Filipino version, may Bisayan version, may Ilocano version, may, may, may Tagalog version. Why? Because we want everyone to read the Bible because it is, your, it is our guidelines to live our lives for the glory of God. Remembering matters. Even if we have a different culture right now, the Bible is inerrant and it is authoritative, and it can be applied every day for the rest of our lives. Even if you're already long gone, the Bible still is applicable to the children who are yet born. That is how powerful God's Word is all about. Today, many people have short-term memory. Alam mo yung parang marami kasi yung madaling makalimot. Alam niyo ba na minsan yung mga the, the pains of the past? We don't even want to go back to that anymore. But how I many of you believe, yes, we could probably not live in the past, but remember and get a lesson from it in order for us to live our lives right now. Many times we are short-term and uh, in our memory that we forget to reason what made us here to begin with. More so, people are not just short-term in their memory, they're also selective in their memory. Ano ibig sabihin ng selective? Pagka problema, ay nako, ayoko nang isipin yan. Okay, pag magaganda yung mga nangyari, yes, I would like that. Selective memory. Isa ka ba doon? Do you have short-term memory? Do you have selective memory? 
I'm here to tell everyone that remembering matters. Remember, the Bible even says all things work together for good to those who love God and to those who are called according to Scripture, according to the purpose of God. Lahat nun nangyari sa akin, whether that would be, you know, something that I choose not to remember and I still have to remember and things that I really want to remember and I want to live out that glory in the past, it, it made me where I am right now. That is why remembering matters. Instead of us having short-term memory, when we remember, we will have long-term perspective. Instead of us having selective memory, when we remember, we will have a holistic perspective of our lives today. That is why we say remembering matters. I pray that each one of us would really look at how God has been faithful to you then, He is faithful to you now, and He will always remain faithful to you for the rest of your life. Can you say amen? amen? This particular psalm in Psalm 119, the psalmist seems to plead his cause to God in prayer. Do you know that we are all going through certain circumstance that we have to um, lift it up or we have to express it to someone? Minsan tayong mga, tayo pong mga tao, alam mo yung, when, we, when we're going through some tough situation, and we all go through that, we talk to our friends. We call our friends. Pare, kapi-kapi naman tayo. Bakit? Kasi meron ako kailangan sabihin sa'yo. Because you have to really um, let go of whatever that would be. Or minsan, min kumari mo, kumari, ang tagal na natin nagkita, tara, chika-chika naman tayo. Wala po akong problema doon sa chikahan na yan, but I pray that in the midst of whatever is going on in our lives, let us not forget God first. Remembering matters. Remembering that God will take care of you. He has taken care of you then, He is taking care of you now, and He will forever take care of us. Now, through the scripture, we would actually look at how the psalmist was actually invoking the divine help for a promised expectation. What do I mean by this? We go to, he went to God in order for him to, uh, to plead his case before God, knowing full well that God had the power to look at his circumstance and God had the power to address whatever he's facing. That is why what we are going to talk about today is that the, are the divine truths to remember in accordance with what Psalm 119, which is our verse for today. Number one, the truth that we have to remember is that remember that God's word leads to redemption. I am not saying that God's word is redemption. God's word incarnated in the Lord Jesus Christ is the redemption. And God's word leads us to know who Jesus Christ is and it would lead us to redemption. Look at how the psalmist said it in 153. He said, look at my affliction. How many of you at one time in your life meron kang affliction? You know, sinong walang affliction? Magpray tayo, magkaroon ka. Para makita mo how powerful our God is. And remember how we will take care of you in the midst of that affliction. The psalmist said, look on my affliction and deliver me. What was he trying to say? Hindi na niya sinasabi kay Lord, whatever he's going through, he was actually pleading his case that God will deliver him. Now that is faith. In the midst of that affliction, he was telling God, Lord, look at my affliction and deliver me. Now how many of you believe that God had the power to bring deliverance in our lives? Regardless of whatever we're going through, God has the ultimate power to bring freedom and deliverance in our lives. Do you believe that? That is why it's important we need to implore the aid of the Almighty God, which is actually found in our Philippine Constitution. It is a plea for God not just to take notice, but to do something about our affliction. 
the psalmist was saying, he is going through affliction and he was running to God for God not just to see but to do something about it. That's why he said, plead my cause and redeem me. I don't know about you, but when I was preparing this, this psalmist is probably going through a tough situation because he was asking God, Lord, redeem me. Tagalugin natin, Panginoon, tubusin mo ko. Now, I feel like there is something that's really deep that's going on with the psalmist because he was asking God, Lord, redeem me. And at times, we also go through that. Hindi tayo yung tipong, Lord, gustong gusto ko yung affliction, huwag mo ko i-redeem ha, kasi enjoy na enjoy ako dito eh. I don't think so. And he also said, when God, he wanted to re- God for, to redeem him, he said, give me life according to your promise. You see, what does redemption mean? To be able to address what redemption means, let us go through what the scripture talks about redemption. Redemption means that we are being rescued from the kingdom of darkness into his marvelous light. Redemption means we are being redeemed from being objects of God's wrath to become recipients of God's unfailing love. Si God po hindi judger. Si God po hindi judgmental. Si God po loving. Kaya nga, siya, kaya nga niya binigay si Jesus Christ eh. Because He loves you so much. And when you mean redemption, it is being restored into a right relationship with God. Guess what? Do you know that the greatest affliction of humanity is actually sin? That's the greatest. Each one of us are born to be sinners. And the Bible says everyone sinned and everyone has fallen short of the glory of God. The Bible likewise says the penalty for our sin is death. Death means eternal death. Eternal damnation. That is the truth in the Word of God. But you know how much loving God is for all of us? How loving He is? The Bible says He loves us so much, He gave His one and only Son, Jesus. So those who believe in Him will not be condemned but will be saved through Jesus Christ. How many of you are thankful that Jesus saved you from your sins? Come on, if you're thankful, give Him praise right now. Pero siyempre, God is loving, but He's also just. He rescued us. He redeemed us. I'm supposed to be in hell. And so are you. But thanks be to God, He gave us Jesus. He redeemed me from hell into a marvelous light in heaven. But the sin that will bring many people to hell is actually done at the cross of Jesus Christ. The penalty of which. That is why I'm so grateful that my Lord Jesus suffered all the consequences of my sins because it is through them, it is through His blood that I'm redeemed, redeemed, rescued, and restored. Guess what, church? Look at me, everyone here. Everyone look here. If God has actually redeemed us from our greatest affliction, which is sin, how much more will God redeem you from whatever we're going through today? Faith yan, kapatid. Kaya you have to remember God. Ang greatest affliction mo, niredeem ka ni Lord, tinubos ka niya. Ano ba naman yung pinagdadaanan mo, kapatid? Napakasimpleng bagay niyan para kay Lord. That is why the, the, the psalmist says, Give me Life! Jesus has already given us life. Life today that would bring us eternity with Him in heaven. When we see, when we seem to be drowning in much affliction, remember 
God's promises written in the Word. Because as we remember, it will bring fullness of life and brightest of hope. That's why I'm saying to everyone, the greatest affliction we all experience, we already redeemed. How much more your lack of finances? How much more your, your, your sickness? How much more, you know, God will redeem your, your family? Ganun po ka faithful si God. All we have to do is to plead our case before Him. Implore the aid of the Almighty God that He will not only see it, but it will also do something about it. The second divine truth we have to remember is that we have to remember that God's word leads to revival. When you talk about revival, it was something that you probably have life before, but now you didn't have. That's why you want it to be brought back to life. The psalmist said, salvation is far from the wicked, for they do not seek your statutes. Marami po talagang mo offend sa gospel. Marami pong mo offend sa Romans when they say all are sinners. Everyone will be offended by this. Because that's, that's the truth of scripture. When Adam and Eve sinned, everyone and the entire creation fell along with Adam and Eve. That's why the Bible says salvation is far from the wicked. The wicked will never seek the statutes of God. In fact, they will lambast, they will bash, and they will not agree with whatever we are saying to them. But the Bible says in verse 4, 156, Great is your mercy, O Lord, give me life according to your rules. It was twice mentioned here that the psalmist was pleading, God give me life. He said in the first one, give me life according to your rules, and then give me life according to your steadfast love. Now, how many of you believe that when you read the Bible, you can actually feel God's love for you? Many times, people are looking at the Bible to be judgmental Bible, to be a judgmental God. I don't think so. Every time I read the Bible, it declares how much God loves me. And because of Scripture, I understand now that God has unfailing and steadfast love. There are probably six possible reasons why that reasons that may suck the life out of us. And to be honest, this is probably one or two or three or more that can actually suck the life out of us. Kahit gano ka ka-strong na Christian, Many times when you look at people and how they view your life and how people will probably persecute you and become an adversary, minsan nakakat, nakakatuyo ng buhay. Tama ba? Kaya nga ngayon, nandito tayo for God to give us life because we're going back to our place. We're going back to our office and let that light shine. For people to see that in the midst of persecution, you are standing strong in the Lord. What are life suckers? Not only are people, but there are problems. Sa sobrang dami pinagdadaanan natin, it probably gets the life out of us. It snuffs the light out. The life out. What else? Pressure. Kailangan perform. Nakakapagod. Tama ba? Next is the pacing. Pag nasa probinsya ka, simple lang ang pacing doon. Pero pag nasa syudad ka, abay lalo na sa Metro Manila, mag-commute ka lang talaga, aakit ka ng ganun, bababa ka. Ta. Pagod, di ba? Now how many of you believe at times, pacing is actually draining the life out of you. Pain. Now how many of you loves pain? Sabi ni ate, may konting matching mata pang ganyan. Ayoko talaga ng pain. And to be honest, tama naman, tama ka. And then, personal sin may also suck the life out of us. But in the midst of whatever would snuff out that life, we run to God. 
because He is the giver of life. He is the redeemer of our lives. He is the author of our lives. What can we learn when we seem to be debilitated by the sinfulness of those around us and the demising of life seems to affect us? God's Word speaks about the need to have a new perspective in life. That's why you have to remember God's Word. That's why you have to store up God's Word in your heart. That's why you have to read the Word. Because there are many opportunities for that life to be snuffed out of us. When we look at the Word of God, let God bring revival. And when we go back to our families, our office mates, and our friends, they would see that life inside of you. And you will begin to proclaim to them, Pare, di ba may problema ka? Bakit parang iba yung countenance mo? It is our responsibility now as a church to be sent out that we may breathe the same life that Jesus has breathed in all of us. Remember that God's Word brings revival. The third truth that we have to remember is that remember that God's Word leads to renewal. The Bible says that many are the persecutors and my adversaries. Marami tayong yan. Marami kang persecutor. In fact, when I was working, I don't have to work, uh, mention the name, yung mismong boss ko, persecutor ko to the max. Yung sabi niya sa akin, no, no, ba't wala kang girlfriend? Ba't di ka umiinom? Hindi ka nag-iossi. Hindi ka sumasama sa Port the Boys. Ba't ganito? Ano, bakla ka ba? No, well, bakla ka? Bakla ka, ano? Persecutor to the max. Sabi ko, itong boss kong ito, talaga naman, kampon. But I said to him, boss, hindi po ako bakla. Meron lang po akong conviction sa buhay na tanging I want to give honor and glory to my God. Not as if I was already judging him. And then at the end of it, Anak ng PI talaga. Magagawa ako. I was just living my life. We are surrounded with people who will persecute us. Not only will there be affliction, but there will also be adversaries. In the midst of all this, the psalmist know, I look at the faithless with disgust because they do not keep your commands. That's why he said, Lord, Napapalibutan ako ng mga taong ganito. That's why every time you look at God's Word, you pray to God that God's Word will renew your mind. Renewing the mind says, we cannot be conformed with the pattern of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of the mind. Because as our mind becomes renewed, we will be able to discern what God's will is for our lives. His good, His pleasing, acceptable, and perfect will. That is why we have to look at the power of Scripture. What else do we need renewal for? Renewing our strength. The Bible says, But they who wait on the Lord shall what? Renew their strength. Nakakapagod ang buhay. Tama po ba? Napagod ako papunta sa church ngayon? Napagod ako kasi parang apat ang, ang kinoconstruct along EDSA. Did you see that day? Along EDSA, traffic was horrible. Super! Nakapagod mag-drive. How many of you believe that God brings renewal? God brings refreshing. And God will give us that renewed strength in our lives. Dahil bukas, Babalik na naman ako sa trabaho at sa eskwelahan. And my strength is going to be renewed because I'm representing the Lord Jesus Christ to the people around me. Finally, renew our spirit. David said, create in me a clean heart and renew the right spirit within me. What is the right spirit within you? It is the one that the Holy Spirit brings to each one of us. That's why it's important that 
we bring the Holy Spirit in our lives because He will renew us. He will revive us. And He will bring redemption in our lives. Ultimately, the Word of God says, the sum of your word is truth, and every one of your righteous rules endures forever. I like the word endure. Endure means you're going through something, and you need to overcome, or maybe stay strong. Kaya endure. The word of God endures forever. What do you mean by that? By that? Enduring forever means people may not agree with Scripture. They probably will lambast the Scripture and disagree with, you know, with several words that they will say against the Scripture. But how many of you have believed throughout all the ages, throughout all the generations, the Scripture endures forever? When we seem to be downtrodden by much persecution that our adversaries may bring or your your persecutors may bring, remember that God's Word is the absolute truth that renews and lifts up our spirit. That is why we have to remember God's Word. God will never leave us. He will never forsake us. He will always be by our side, whatever we go through in life. So I pray that we will all remember not only the scripture, but we remember God's unfailing love for all of us. Amen? Let's all bow our heads right now and pray. Father, today in the name of Jesus Christ, Thank you for giving us life. Today, as the psalmist said, he is imploring the aid of the Almighty because he wanted the divine Lord to see his circumstance and to address whatever he's going through. He wanted to have redemption. He wanted to have revival. He wanted to have renewal, Lord God. So I pray that each one, Father, will have an understanding that only you can bring that to each one of us. I want to pray first for people who have yet to commit their lives to Jesus Christ. Maybe the reason why you're going through those situations is because the Lord Jesus Christ is probably not at the center of your life or not the foundation of your life. That is why if you want to give your life to Jesus Christ for the first time, let this be a time of salvation for you. Repeat after me and say, Father God, I'm making a decision today. In the midst of my sinfulness, I remember your love for me. I'm turning away from all my sins and from everything that the Bible calls sin. I ask for your forgiveness, Lord. Thank you for redeeming me from all my sins as we turn away from them. I put my trust on you, Jesus, and receive you as my Savior and my Lord. Thank you for writing my name in your book of life. In Jesus' name. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, we want to help you with your journey in the Lord. At the end of the service, we have our victory group leaders here in front. If you need prayers, we have our victory group leaders likewise. And they're holding the placard that says, if you need prayers, just go and approach any one of them. I believe the Lord our God wants everyone to have an encounter with Him. Can I ask everyone to stand up right now on their feet? We're also going to be praying for several people today because if you look at the Psalms that we just read, 
there are two things that the, that the psalmists are actually asking God for help. Number one is affliction. Number two is adversary. With whatever we're going through today, I believe the Lord our God will give you life. Do you believe that? If you're going through an affliction in life, we have to run to God and ask Him, Lord, give me life, God. If there are people who seem to be an adversary because of your faith, we run to God and say, Lord, give me life. If you're going through those two, affliction and adversary, would you begin to raise your hands to God right now and just say, Lord, that is me, God. I'm going through much affliction today. And there are people who are against me, Lord God. Father, you see the hands, Lord, of this men and women raised up. We're asking today, Father God, that you will draw them to your presence. That they may see you and have life. In the midst of affliction, Lord, redeem them from such. In the midst of adversaries, Lord, put to silence, God, whatever they're being accused of. And let your vindication come and appear. But as far as we're concerned right now, Lord, we choose to run to you in worship. We choose to run to you, God, to be our deliverer. And as we worship you, Father, lifting up our hands to you, since declaring, God, that you will take care of each one of your children, Lord. We worship you, Father. Let's just worship the Lord right now.